All right, what's going on, everyone? Casey Adams here. Welcome back to the Rise of the Young podcast. Today, we have the one and only Rick Ross. Thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Man, I'm happy to be here. Shout out to you know everybody that's tuned in, and congratulations on you shining, homie. I appreciate it, man. So, I mean, I, I've been listening to your, for, to your music for quite some time, but I've hosted this podcast for the last, you know, two plus years, and I bring on entrepreneurs and I know that you preach entrepreneurship and business as well as that you just came out with a new book called Hurricanes so to start off this conversation man first off what inspired you to write your book and what keeps you motivated in the entrepreneur world I think honestly one of the things that keep me inspired the most is when I see really uh the success of others you know because it, it just it just reminds me that I'm that capable and I really believe it. And if you're someone who really tell yourself that and you really practice what you preach, it's only so long you can go without really being encompassed with that success and that drive and really just uh, after purchasing, you know, the 48 Laws of Power and, you know, different books, Mass Mass Tree and just all those different, you know, it's just like, yo, I got to give somebody my perspective. Yeah. You know, and that's what most definitely my memoir was about, you know, just giving them my perspective. It wasn't so much intended to inspire. I wanted to give them my perspective, which I knew would be inspiration within itself. For sure, man. What's what's your advice to young entrepreneurs that are just starting their first business? Because I know, you know, it's someone like yourself has been able to build an empire in, in their world outside of just music. So what's your advice to young entrepreneurs starting their first business today? I think what's most important is it begins with you, your lifestyle. Um, you know, how how serious are you about, you know, sustaining capital, saving your money? How do you really spend your money? What do you really spend your money on? What means the most? Saving or enjoyment? You know, some quick uh, fun shit. You know, it's really on you. And I know for me, like I, I made clear in the memoir, Hurricanes, my first year I didn't even buy a car after my first record exploded and I began to, to generate real income, performing uh, appearances, walkthroughs, collaborations, record sales. For the first year, I wanted to sit back and see what this pace was, how long would this last, first and foremost, how, how much could I accumulate and what would I do with that? And so my first year, I didn't, I didn't want to spend nothing. I wanted to save to put me in a different category. So if I did want to make an investment, it wouldn't just be on a quarter million dollar house or half a million dollar house. If I really stacked, if I wanted to invest in something else, you know, upwards towards five million, I'd yep. be in a position. Where does that mindset come from? Well, for me, just because a lot of times I look around and I realize it's not as common. I, I, that's why I give my mom so much credit. Yep. You know, my mom, she always was a, a hard worker. She, you know, achieved multiple degrees. And that also spilled over into my sister. Uh, not eat too easily for myself, you know. If I could, I would go back now and get me a degree or two. But, you know, it's never been that easy for me. I always was able to finesse in other areas. Yeah. That's what I made sure I focused on. For sure, man. So I'm, I'm 19 years old right now. I'm not sure if you knew, but I want you to bring up just what advice do you have to your younger self? Because I'm sure you've learned so much throughout your journey as a business owner and as a musician, but what advice do you give to 18 year old entrepreneurs um, based on the journey that you've been through? You know, first and foremost, man, you, you got so much life to live. You got so much life ahead of you. Um, let's keep the priorities, the priorities. Let's not bullshit. If you uh, imagine yourself being married at 21 and kids at 23, if that's your vision, cool. If it's not your vision, um great let's chase this success you know what i'm saying and anybody that's supposed to be there with you they gonna want you to have it even better than you want it yeah, so they'll yeah. be there with you they'll stay there with you and 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 lay out your vision because it's already there for you it's clear yep 
You, it's most definitely clear. Lay that shit out and go get it. Yep. How do you define success in your life? Um, success in my life really is being in a position to provide, being in a position of peace, mm. being able to, being in uh, happiness. I'm not sure. Will I ever just be happy? I don't know if I really want to be happy. Sometimes you got to ask yourself that and answer that because a lot of times the things you put yourself into and uh, things you become a part of, um, uh, what do you want more? You know what I mean? Yeah. And to me, me accomplishing certain things is my, my form of happiness. Love so, that. yeah. So to me, I just want to accomplish some shit. I want to set some goals. I want to challenge myself. I want to push myself and I want to watch others break. That's running that same race with me. And I keep going. And once I cross that finish line to me, that's my fulfillment. That's my happiness. Love it. I mean, speaking of that, you know, you've, you, you know, you've had Maybach Music Group, you have Wingstop locations, you have all these different businesses. What is your fundamental business strategy when building brands? And when you go to launch something new, what's your strategy? Because you've done so well with all the projects you're a part of. Um, I think something that I recognize over this pandemic, which was, you know, of course, unfortunate as fuck. I'm not going to dwell on that. But one thing that I really realized that all of the investments I had in common was basically they, they were all essential. Mm. Other than me performing um, for crowds, for me performing for fans, you see the Black Bottle Boys, the Bel Air flowing, me enjoying okay. nights out, performing my records that, you know, I worked so long to create. Other than that, that's the only thing that I really had to, to miss or go without, which was the right thing to do. Other than that, Wingstop, the, those locations remained open. Checkers, it remained open. Um, I, I began to you know do more on social media just to stay in touch with my fans because yeah. I got to read comments more than I ever have and answer a few more questions. A lot of things I did on my social media was because they were Ask so many Rose, you you lost so much weight. What do you eat in the morning? I'm like, why do it's 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 five times more eat in the morning questions versus the rest of the day. So I began to show people what I eat in the morning. This is what it is, this is what it is. But other than that, man, you know, I, I just love that man. I, I saw you had some great fish this morning. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I I want to touch on that though, just daily routine, right? I, I know that's super important to you. What is your daily routine? And, you know, what, what keeps you motivated on a daily basis? Well, you, you know, like I say, I'm motivated when I wake up to the circle that I have, um, the investments that we have, everything else I'm looking into. I just got a text maybe an hour ago from somebody real close to me, and they told me that, that was, uh, I was looking at a 220-unit, um, you know, complex and they just told me that it was actually under escrow so it's 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 always something new yeah i, you know, I love when you say uh get a duplex before a maybach and I, i've been following you for quite some time and uh, you know when you go on rants on your instagram story about entrepreneurship i know it, it relates to a lot of people that are looking to start businesses but talk to me about that when it comes to real estate and how you look at that when it comes to you know acquiring these locations and these duplexes just is this where you're putting majority of your focus or how do you, you know, separate your time with everything you have going on? Well, really it, it to me, it's just, it just feels most natural real estate land. Yep. Uh, you know, we could reproduce as many cars we want our paintings, those pictures on the back of the wall, they can make those, but that address, that location you have, they can't remake that. They got to come see you for that. If that's in your name, they got to come see my little homie. They got to yeah. bust that bag down. <laughs> they got to give my little homie what he want if they want it. If yep. they on the boss vibe, they got to come see you. And that's what it's about to me. To me, real estate is as good as it gets. You know, I never got to mingle in other things. You know, I sit at the table with some of my homies and they looking at their stocks and they're looking at this and that. And that's cool. I, I watch. I yeah. watch. You know what I'm saying? But I'm most comfortable, without a doubt, investing in real estate, acres, um, commercial, residential, whatever it is. 
I haven't lost a dollar in a real estate investment. I love that, man. When it comes to the future, how you look at your life, what are you excited about for what's to come, right? Because you, you, you got a lot going on and this is just the beginning. So like, what keeps you excited and what are you excited about? You know, I feel like, I feel like as you come into your early 40s, that's when you really get to, to play with the real numbers. Okay. I really feel like this one, I'm going to really get to play with different numbers, yeah. real numbers, real investments. That's when it begin to, you know, um, you do other things. Yeah. And um, right now, this one, I begin to look at, you know, different things. This one, you begin to look at pro teams and just all the things that you would just fathom all the things that you may not even believe all the things you may still on the inside of your heart feel is impossible but yeah. the reality is there is a possibility there for sure what's like uh when you talk about pro teams yeah yeah i'm talking about like the dolphins i'm talking about like yeah you know when i'm sitting around with d wade and we having certain conversations you never know what the play may be in five years 10 years, you never know what the possibilities are. We may have three Super Bowls with Tua, and I may be on the sideline with the Gatorade cup squeezing yeah. it out because I got, you know, 2% of the Dolphins. You yeah. never know. That's what's up. Would you say that's a goal of yours, to own a part of the Dolphins? Oh, man. Just being in the game, period. Just being able to, to be around the teams that I love, period, would be a dream come true. I love that, man. It, it's funny because um, – when, when you talk about, you know, Dolphins or the Heat, do you have, you know, which one would you rather be involved in if you had to choose right now? I mean, you know, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge Heat fan. We all know that. You know, I love the Dolphins. From day one, I grew up on Dan Marino. Of course, there was a space. You know, it was 20 seasons between Dan Marino and I feel like what we are today, which is, you know, we just, you know, yep. grab tour. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he really our first superstar. Other than flashes of greatness from running back Ricky Williams, or, you know, a few defensive players, we haven't had a superstar on the Dolphins since Dan Marino left. I feel Tua is the first, first one back that will really get the city involved, you know, make everybody proud being where they're from. And I feel like uh, uh, our future is extremely bright. Yeah. And I'll be there. And I'm going to be throwing it up for the Dolphins. <laughs> I'm going to be throwing it up straight for up. Sure, for sure. I have two more questions, man. Um, first off, this conversation has been great, but when it comes to the way you look at the world now, especially what's been happening with this pandemic and how things have shifted, what have you learned about business during a time like this? Because it's something that everyone's going through, right? Maybe people are getting, you know, losing their jobs or their businesses is taking a hit. What advice do you give to people that may be going through some struggles right now? Because I know you've been through a lot in your life. How have you remained, you know, on top through your struggles? Well, you know, that's something that I always, always preached. You got to save. You got to prepare for these days. These are the days you have to prepare for, not the days that you assume you know, will always come the same. Every seven days will always be the same. No, it will not. You know, you come across certain challenges, you come across certain things, and it's unfortunate. But when I think about quarantine and me remaining indoors and, and remaining social distant, you know, for me, that was just like being on house arrest, you know, getting out on bond, man. And, and, and that's what I had to do for almost two and a half years at one time. So um, for everybody that's going through it, prepare for these days and when you are at home find something to do so you know i you know last week or a week or two ago i cut my grass for the first time actually okay. yesterday you know i pulled the weeds out around the house you know i'm helping out you know yeah. I, I, can't, I don't want to say i did it all because i'll be you know um that wouldn't be true but i most definitely got out there and put some hours in because yeah. that's what it's about we got to invest in ourselves. This your real estate, this your neighborhood, this your block, this your community. We got to invest in ourselves. And that's, that's what we got to start with ourselves and right around us, immediately around us. Yeah. Love it. Last question to, to really wrap it up. I know that um, we gave a huge shout out to Robert Greene earlier, but I know you, you talk a lot about 48 Laws of Power and, you know, education and self-education. What has that book taught you and how do you remain um, just, you know, self-educating yourself on a daily basis? I think a lot of times, 
um, the book itself is you read it going with the flow. And it's something that I like to tell myself. Sometimes after you read it going with the flow of it, you got to read it counterclockwise now. Mm. So sometimes it's certain um, laws that you take and you ask yourself, okay, let's say for instance, never outshine the master. The master. Okay, you never outshine the master. Okay, why not? And if I were, if I were to, how would I? Okay, that's going against the flow. That's going counterclockwise now. So it's it's giving you game. It's letting you know. That's just like me watching the Last Dance. Yeah. Uh, and Scottie Pippen coming in telling Charles Oakley, "I'm gonna yeah. be better than Michael Jordan." It's a perfect reference. You never outshine the master, you know. Yep. And that was one of the reasons why. Love that. I I, I love uh, Last Dance. I was watching the last night. Yeah. All right, just to, to wrap it up, Rick, I first off, huge shout out to you for coming on the show. I want to ask you real quick, too, just I'm curious, what inspired you to do this podcast today? Because I know um, we've been in the DMs for quite some time on Instagram, and I'd love to get your thoughts because I know, you know, it, it's, 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 a, it's a cool lesson that a lot of young entrepreneurs will learn. And I have an audience, you know, 18 to 25. So I'd love to just get your thoughts on that real quick. What made me uh, interested in doing your podcast was the fact you presented yourself as a boss. You presented yourself as a hustler. 99.9% .9 of people who present themselves to you uh, online will come with their hands out. You came like a boss. You came with something that you presented on the table. Big homie, I know your time is valuable to you, but I just want to let you know this is what I bring to the table. The, you know, one of my last interviews was with such and such and such. In my future, this is what the play is. And I'd be interested. And I said, you know what? The little homie Future Bright, just by the fact he know how to present himself, he know how to come to the table as a boss. And it's sad, but a lot of people who could have done those same interviews, they just wouldn't even know how to present themselves to let, you know, someone know that they have something to bring to the table which you do, and I want to keep, see you keep shining. I appreciate that, man. That means the world to me. Last thing, where is the best place for people to, to stay up to date with everything you have going on in your life? Well, of course, you can always go to my IG, Rich Forever. And, you know, I pray we are rich forever. Yep. Uh, my Instagram, I usually keep everybody updated. Everybody who tuned in, uh, a good friend of mine, Wale, he actually just released a new video titled Sue Me. It's a very incredible video. I want y'all to check that out. Um, you know, Meek Mill, Double MG, shout out to Yvette who, you know, who tagged us up. <laughs> just my whole squad, Gunplay, he dropping some new record, a new record among Pyrex popping. That'll be coming out, I want to say, uh, May 15th. Right. And uh, I'm in the studio, so Maybach Music, man. You know, Love one it. time for the Black Bottle Boys. We still doing what we do best. You know what I'm saying? And that's make big records. Love it. Well, Rick Ross, thanks so much for coming on today, my man. Much love, baby. Keep shining.